Hey, what's up everybody? This is Vicki and welcome to our beginning 3D modeling with Blender video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover getting started with Blender. First of all, you may be wondering what is Blender? Blender is a 3D modeling software. It lets you create 3D objects and characters. It also helps you render scenes, but we won't be doing that in this tutorial. And finally, it helps you export objects and characters for use in your own apps and games. Blender is one of the three main 3D modeling software programs. The other two are 3D Studio Max and Maya. However, we're using Blender because it's open source, which main, means it's free. And the general consensus is that it's just as powerful as the other two, so this is the one you're going to want to use. So why should you learn Blender? Well, if you're a developer, you'll want to know Blender so that you can make your own basic models for your game. You also might need to know Blender in order to fix a model that you get from somewhere else. Or to tweak that model, for example, making it a different color or making it taller. And if you're an artist or a developer who wants to be an artist, too, you'll want to know Blender in order to make your own 3D models and characters because that's really fun. What you'll learn in this video tutorial is the overall process of creating a 3D model, the components of ba Blender's basic scene, how to navigate the windows and panels of Blender, and finally, how to manipulate objects in object mode. A 3D model is made of two things. One is a 2D image, and the second is a 3D mesh mapped to that image. This is like taking a flat paper map and a round ball with a mesh on it and combining those two to get a globe. The 3D modeling process has four steps. The first, you place the object. That's the easy part. The second, you edit the mesh of the object to get what you want at the end. In this case, it will be a mushroom. The third step is unwrapping the mesh of the object. For example, if your object is an orange, this is like taking the peel off of the orange. The fourth step of the process is to create and apply a texture image for your object. So this is like taking your map and putting it behind your mesh, and it, when you do that, you get your 3D object. The first thing you'll want to do is have Blender installed. If you don't have Blender installed, go to blender.org and download the latest version of Blender. I'm using version 2.70. Now when you open Blender, you'll have this default scene. If you don't have that, you can go to File New. In the default scene, you'll have three objects. First is the cube, and that's your default object. And then there is the camera, which is this right here. And there is a lamp, which is your light source. These are all located on the 3D axis, which is this plane that you see here. There's the x-axis in red, the y-axis in green, and the z-axis is blue, which you don't see here, but you can always come down here and look at this little icon down here to see how your 3D axes are oriented. There are four areas in Blender that you should know of. First is the 3D view, which we're in right now. Then there's the outliner panel, which has all of your different objects in your scene. Then there's the properties panel here. And this has a bunch of different tabs, and they each have information that relates to whatever object you're working with. Then there is the tool shelf over here, and that will have a bunch of different tools that you can use depending on what object you have selected. You can get around in Blender by rotating the view, which you've seen me doing. I'm holding down the middle mouse button and moving it around. You can zoom using the scroll wheel. And you can pan up and down by holding down shift and using the scroll wheel. Or you can pan right and left by holding down control and moving the scroll wheel. Also, there are two ways of viewing the 3D window. One is perspective mode, which we're in right now. And what that means is that objects closer to you appear bigger than objects farther away. So as you can see, this grid square over here looks a lot smaller than this grid square right here. This is how we see things in real life, so it's a lot more intuitive to work with. However, there is another mode called orthographic mode, which means that you don't have any perspective distortion. And that is useful when you need to do precise editing with the grid lines. For example, let's go into top view right now. And you can choose specific views by going down to view, 
and choosing from this menu right here. So you can choose top view. And if you look at top view, you'll see that it automatically puts you into the orthographic perspective, which means that this top line right here lines up perfectly with the grid, and that makes it a lot easier to edit. The only reason you usually go into top view or a specific side view is to edit precisely so it automatically puts you into orthographic mode. You switch between orthographic and perspective mode by going to view and choosing view perspective slash orthographic. You can also use the short key five on your number pad. And when you hit five, you can see that the top of the square doesn't line up precisely with the grid lines anymore. That's because the top of your cube is actually above the 3D plane. So this mark right here, even though it, it is aligned with the top of the square in reality, it doesn't look like it right now. So you'll want to use orthographic mode when you're editing precisely, but the rest of your editing is going to be done in perspective mode. The next thing you should know is how to move your panels around. You can make them bigger or wider or thinner by dragging them from their side. You can move them up and down like so. You can also close them completely like this. And if you do close them completely, you can reopen them by looking for this icon up here. It's a little transparent plus symbol. And if you click on that, it'll come back out. There will be times that you want to have two windows of your object at the same time. And to create another window, you'll go up to this little triangle at the top right or at the bottom left of your window. Left click that and drag it to open a new one. You can also do this vertically to open a window like this. Once you have these windows open, you might want to close them. And to do that, say you want to close this window. You'll go to this window down here, go to the little triangle that's closest to the window you want to close, left click and drag, and you're looking for the window you want to close to turn dark and have this arrow pointing up towards it. And when you release your mouse, that window will disappear. So let's say we want to get rid of this window now. We'll go to the bottom left triangle, drag it over, and release when we see it darken. So that's all you need to know about getting around in Blender. Next, we're going to move on to adding and transforming objects in object mode. There are several modes in Blender, and they determine what you can affect with the objects. In object mode, you can add objects, delete objects, and transform them, transform them by scaling, rotating, or translating them, which is just moving them. And before you do that, you'll need to know how to select the object. Right now, we have the camera selected. You'll see whatever selected is in yellow. The way you deselect everything is by pressing A. And you can select everything again by pressing A, a again. But now you'll see that all three of these objects are selected. So A will toggle selecting or deselecting everything. If you want to select a single object, right click it with your mouse. You'll see that it has a yellow outline and then you know it's selected. We don't really want a cube here, so the first thing you'll learn is how to delete an object. You do that by selecting the object and then pressing X and hitting delete. And now that it's gone, we can add a new object. And the first thing you'll want to do before you add a new object is to check where your 3D cursor is. And the 3D cursor is this little thing right here and it's often not in the center because you set it by left clicking with your mouse, which I do a lot, so it's usually in a random spot. So we need to reset it back to zero, zero, zero. The way you do that is going down to the object menu, choosing snap, and then choosing cursor to center, and that'll reset it at the origin. Now that the 3D cursor is at the origin, we can add our object. There are several ways you can do that. First, you can go down to the add menu, and it'll show you what you have. You can also go over here to this tool shelf and choose create the create tab and it'll show you all of the things that you have to, to add. See, so you can add planes, cubes, a bunch of different shapes, including a monkey, which this monkey head, a lot of designers like to use when they need to test out a scene with lighting. So it's a nice complex object. And of course it has to be a monkey. What else would it be? So you can delete that again by pressing X and deleting it. And finally, the easiest and fastest way to add something is to use the shortcut Shift A. 
That'll bring up this menu right here, wherever your mouse is, and you can add something from the menu. We're going to add a cylinder. So click cylinder. And immediately after you add the cylinder, you'll want to go back to your tool shelf because there are options here that are only available immediately after you add your object. For example, the number of vertices. The more vertices it has, the more complex it is. We want the vertices to be 10. You can just type that in. And we want the radius to be 1.5. And we want the depth to be around 3. We also want the cap fill type to be a triangle fan. At this point, you can also, if you manage to place your object in the wrong spot, you could reset it to the origin here. While we're still in object mode, there are a few things you can do to the object. You can transform the object by moving it, scaling it, or rotating it. And to do this, there are several methods available to you. The first is using these buttons over here. And as soon as you click one of these things, the object's going to start moving with your mouse. To decide that you want it wherever you're, you've placed it, you can left click. And if you don't want it and you want to discard this transformation, you can right click. You can do the same thing with rotate or scale. The next thing you can do is transform with the shortcut keys, which is the fastest. To do that, let's say we want to move it. You can type G for grab, and then it'll start following your mouse around. You can constrain this to a specific axis by pressing the letter for that axis. So let's say we want to transform this to move along the x-axis. Press X, and now it only slides along that x-axis. You can undo your latest action by pressing Command Z. To scale an object, the shortcut key is S, and it'll follow your mouse. And let's say you want to scale it only along the z-axis, so we'll press Z, and you can see that it only goes along the z-axis. I'm going to undo that, and rotating works the same way. You can constrain it around the y-axis, and there you go. Right-click to discard the transformation. The next way to transform the object is to go down here and use the transform manipulators. Right now, we are in the translate mode, which means you're moving it. So if you left-click and slide one of these transform handles, it will move along that axis. I'm going to undo that. This next little button switches those handles to the rotate handles. And if you click that, it'll rotate along that axis. And if you click on the red handle, it will rotate along the x-axis. It works the same way with the scale transform handles. Click this little icon here for scale, and then it'll scale only along that axis. Undo that. The last way you can transform the object is the one that gives you the most control, and that's opening this transform panel, which, if you didn't see me do that, it's this little button right here. Click that to open the transform panel. And then you can type in specific numbers if you have something very specific in mind. I'm going to close that again. That's everything that you can do to an object in object mode. And after this, now that we have our object placed, we'll need to move on to edit mode. And that's the subject for the next video. That's it for this video tutorial, and as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. However, for this series, you're going to have only one challenge, and it's going to come at the end. So stay tuned, and at the end, you'll be making your own tree. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.